Hello, I'm the host of Discover the Oak Ridge's Marine video series, Susan Lloyd Swale. This video series is a journey in learning about the Oak Ridge's Marine through visual exploration and interviews with experts. The Oak Ridge's Marine, known as Ontario's Rain Barrel, is a major source of groundwater for the Greater Toronto Area and the lifeblood of Ontario's Greenbelt. But as you'll see in these videos, it is so much more. Here we are at episode 7. On the eastern end of the Oak Ridge's Moraine, the Alderville First Nation Black Oak Savannah Restoration Site is the largest intact area of native grassland habitat left within the Rice Lake Plains. In this episode, you'll learn about the significance of Savannah restoration and go away with hope for the future. We're at the Alderville Black Oak Savannah Ecology Center and Restoration Site, which is just over 100 acres of predominantly tall grass prairie ecosystems, although there's a couple of other ecosystems that occur here as well, including forest and wetland. Our three missions or mandates are to perform ecological restoration, provide education and outreach, and also provide a rich and diverse research site. So those are kind of our three main ways that we make sure that these ecosystems are persisting, both on our small organization level and hopefully having a greater effect throughout the Rice Lake Plains or the Oak Ridge's Moraine or the Green Belt. The rare ecosystems that are here, the rare grassland ecosystems that are here, are very culturally important to Indigenous communities. The Alderville Black Owned Savannah has been under First Nation governance for over 20 years, which makes it one of only a handful of projects of its type in Ontario. A lot of people think about sort of pre-European settlement or colonization, Ontario was just forest. Um, that's actually not true based on sort of indigenous people's land practices and relationships with the land. Anishinaabe Moen, Rice Lake is known as Pemidash Kodiang, translates to the Lake of the Burning Plains, which really describes the relationship with fire on this landscape. An elder from Curve Lake once told me that folks would come to Rice Lake to harvest rice and they would look across the shores and the south shores of Rice Lake which is where we are right now, would be sort of a blaze and you could see the reflection of the fire on the, on the water of Rice Lake. This tall grass prairie and black oak savanna are fire adapted ecosystems. So a large part of the work we do here, um, especially in the spring, is to do prescribed burns. So we'll take areas of the, of the property and um, basically burn it. And that helps to maintain species compositions of those ecosystems and to generally maintain the health of those systems. Different plants have different strategies. One common theme is that they all have really deep roots and so a tall grass prairie fire sort of moves across the surface and burns up the thatch above the ground. It moves quite quickly and therefore doesn't burn deep into the soil. In some instances some trees and shrubs uh, actually benefit from fire. Their seeds are scarified as fire moves across the landscape, which increases their germination rate. It removes some of the other species, like early successional species, that disturbed in open areas back into forests. As a result of fire suppression and land use changes, fire is no longer being used on the landscape to the same extent and therefore these fire dependent ecosystems, which tall grass prairies are one of, have not been supported. Grassland ecosystems exist in really small pockets in Ontario now and they're shrinking and they're becoming more fragmented and more rare every day. And so this project is an opportunity for people to learn about uh, grasslands and to become stewards. And I think it's just so important to teach people about these ecosystems because of their importance in the species at risk habitat, climate change mitigation, their cultural significance to indigenous communities. People often engage and appreciate and respect areas that they know and love and understand. So that's why education is so important is because you're truly not going to care about protecting it or want to protect it or be passionate about it if you don't understand how it works or its beauty or its mechanisms. 
the animal and plant populations, both in the Oak Ridges Moraine and the Rice Lake Plains, where the Alderville Black Oaks fan is located, are being very much threatened and declining. Um, there is a lot of opportunity for organizations throughout the Oak Ridges Moraine to work together and implement ethical seed collection programs and through the cultivation of native plants in nursery and greenhouse settings we can start to implement um, plant, native planting programs and programs to work to increase these plant and animal communities. A lot of our seed is collected from this site specifically, the Black Oak Savanna and throughout Alderville First Nation and it's very important because the seeds from the plants that are growing in this area are genetically specific to the specific climates and grassland communities of the Rice Lake Plains, whereas seed collected very far afield may not be specifically evolved for these areas. Any home garden, any home gardening, even if it's as small as like a tiny little deck or patio, you can incorporate native plants into your gardening. It doesn't even have to be 100% native plants in your garden, even just incorporating as many as possible or 50% is really going to help pollinators and all the native animal species who have evolved with these plants and rely on them for food and habitat and nesting materials. A lot of unique species from plants, insects, because they're so rare on the landscape you don't, you don't really see them anywhere else. There's something about this landscape, there's something about this place that makes you expand your horizons and look at things through a, a different lens than anywhere else I've worked. Some people think that human beings uh, can only have a negative impact on the natural world but these ecosystems are culturally maintained, so it's kind of this unique uh, coming together of what we do is actually having a benefit to these ecosystems.